One of the biggest questions that I get asked by parents all the time is, what happens when my child is behind? How do I get them up to grade level? How do I get them to catch up? How do I make sure that they learn everything they need to know when they need to know it? Welcome back to my channel. I'm Jess from the blog SiloAndSage.com and here we talk about cultivating your home. And we talk a lot about homeschooling and not just this idea of doing school at home, but the idea of home, not school. So whenever I talk about that, people think I mean throwing out all the academics, letting the kids run wild, and they never learn what they need to learn. But this idea of being behind is so stuck to this school system mindset that we talked about in my previous video about unschooling and interest-led child-led learning. I got a lot of comments and messages and emails from people asking me, well, what do I do when my child isn't up to their level? What do I do when they're behind? How do I make sure that they have everything that they need, that their peers have, so that they can get a good job, they can get into a good college, they can have all of the skills that they need? I'm gonna challenge you to change your perspective a little bit, to think about how the school system has shaped our way of thinking about what behind is. And I'm gonna give you kind of a different definition for how you know that your kids are on track or how you know that they're learning what they're supposed to be learning. So let's think for a minute about the school system, okay? So in your state or wherever you live, there are thousands of kids who are going to public school wherever you are right now. So I'm in Wisconsin. In the state of Wisconsin, there are thousands of kids that are going to public school in my area, in you know the general region, in the entire state. There are thousands of children going to public school, but they're not all getting the same exact experience. Some of these kids might be in a good school district, and some of them might have amazing teachers. I know some of these teachers because I used to teach in the public school system, not far from where I live now. They have resources, they have budgets, they have involved parents, but there are some districts and some schools that don't have many resources. They might not have great teachers. I've been in some of these schools too. Some of these kids within, you know, spitting distance of your house might be going to school but not paying attention at all and they might be just swept along from year to year because if they don't make a fuss they probably aren't going to get noticed a lot and maybe they're not even retaining any of the things that they are learning now none of these kids in all these different schools throughout your state or your region wherever you live they're not all being taught the exact same thing because the child's teacher might have a certain bent to teach a certain way or to teach a certain subject more than others. Or the way the day goes, they might just miss an entire topic altogether and the teacher doesn't have time to go back and make it up. There could be sick days or snow days if you live in Wisconsin, there can be those. There could be days that kids are switched to virtual school these days. There could be days or weeks where a child has a substitute teacher and that substitute teacher is doing the best that they can, but they're not equipped to teach in the same way that a regular classroom teacher is equipped. Even with state standards, not all kids end up learning the same exact thing. There are many kids who fall through the cracks. They can't get the help that they need when they can't keep up with the pace of their classmates and often they don't have the opportunity to catch up later. A child might go on a vacation and miss one or two weeks of school, and what they do when they're gone might be completely different than what the kids are doing in the classroom. It might be something that he doesn't understand on his own, and his teacher doesn't have time to catch him up on it, or maybe he never does the work at all. Now, these are just a few examples of how within your own area, within your own state, and maybe even your own school district, there are kids who are learning different things, even when they're taught the same things. Not all kids 
actually are learning at the same pace, at the same level, or even just retaining the same information. You could teach 10 kids the same exact thing. You could read them the same story, ask them the same questions, give them the same lesson, and they may all walk away with something completely different because what was relevant to them or important to them and sinks in that they remember is not always the same. But many of these kids, most of these kids, will go on and get good jobs because what they become interested in later, it comes to the surface, right? And they're suddenly interested in a certain field and they want to learn about it. So they might watch YouTube videos or take additional classes or read books or just, they get super into something on their own and suddenly they want to learn more about it. This idea of being behind is really only relevant in schools because the school system has a pace and it is created for a reason. It's created to help teachers manage their time and to manage many children at the same time. It's designed not really with the child in mind. It's designed with the teacher and the school system in mind. It's designed to make it easier for the adults in this situation. The public school system is not designed for every child to flourish and for every child to be successful at things that they love, at things that they're good at, at things that they are excited about, at the specific things that they are going to pursue in the future. Because it can't be. There are too many kids for that. There's only one teacher to 30 kids. She cannot possibly tailor each child's individual education. Now, there are some schools where they have the advantage of having one teacher per 15 kids and they have two assistants and they have a different type of curriculum. You see this sometimes in Montessori schools or Waldorf schools or a charter school. Those schools might have more capacity to tailor the education and to make sure that these kids don't fall through the cracks or to make sure that these kids aren't behind in what they're doing. But the reality is that kids do not all learn at the same time. They don't learn at the same pace. They aren't motivated to learn things in the same way. And my chickens are laying eggs outside. This is the problem of being a homesteading YouTuber. When you want to record in your house, the chickens like to uh, <laughs> make their presence known right outside my window every time. It's something that you can look forward to hearing in just about every one of my videos. <laughs> But when a child in a public school setting is not ready developmentally for the content or for the skill that they're being taught, they don't have the option generally to wait. They don't have the option to wait till they're developmentally ready, till they're emotionally ready, till their you know bodies are physically ready, till their brains have caught up their brains and their hands and all the you know the working parts of having the fine motor skills catch up to your you know cognitive development all of these connections that have to be made in a child's brain and body they don't have the time to wait because the school has standards and they have requirements for kids to meet these standards by a specific time but that is not how child development actually works. If you've ever taken a child development course, which as a trained teacher, I took many child development courses. This is not how child development works. There's a range of development. If your child learns to walk at nine months or your child works to, learns to walk at 18 months, those are all normal, right? That's a normal range of when a child learns to walk. And the same is true of reading, math, writing, all kinds of academic skills. Kids do not learn these naturally all at five years old, but the school wants them and needs them to learn these things at five years old. So what happens when they don't? They are labeled behind, they are pushed down a track of ser services and support and stress and struggle. Let's use potty training as an example, because if you're a parent, this is something that you have 
probably dealt with. You've had to potty train a child. Now, if you've ever potty trained more than one child, you know that they probably didn't learn it in the same way or on the exact same timeline. In fact, if you tried to potty train your second child in the same way that you potty trained your first, and at the same time, you may have noticed that it didn't go as well for you. Because I noticed when I was potty training multiple children that you cannot teach a child to use the potty unless they are ready. If you try to force a child to potty train on your timeline and in the way that you want them to do it, it probably will not go the way you want it to go. Now, some kids might be ready at 18 months to potty train, but let me tell you that the kids I tried to potty train at 18 months took way longer than the kids that I potty trained at three years old. Because at three years old, their bodies were ready. They were developmentally ready and they potty trained almost instantly, like crazy fast. Whereas my kids that I tried to potty train between 18 months and two years old, they took forever. <laughs> it was a long, struggling process because their bodies were just not ready for it. So just like potty training, you have skills that have a wide range of when kids are developmentally ready to learn. Learning to walk, learning to ride a bike, learning to read, learning math skills, learning to write. All of these things and more things have a range. Kids do not all develop at the same rate, at the same time, at the same pace, and they don't usually develop at the pace at which we want them to. We can't force them to learn things that they're not developmentally ready for. So in the school system, when kids are labeled behind, it's usually because they are not developmentally ready. Now in this video, I am not going to address um, learning challenges like any kind of developmental delay, like a significant diagnosed developmental delay, learning disabilities, those are separate entirely. I'm talking about neuro neurotypical kids who are developing within a normal range. But the problem is that the school system does not acknowledge that there is a normal range for academic skills. It doesn't allow for that within the system. So when we take that system and plop it into our homeschool, we think, well, my child is kindergarten age, so they should be learning how to read. And when they don't learn to read at five or even six years old, we start to have this nagging voice in the back of our mind that says, I'm doing something wrong. There's something wrong with my child because he's behind, or I don't know how to homeschool and homeschooling is not for me. But this idea of behind doesn't fit in homeschooling. It is something that only is relevant for the school system. Now, I have seen my own children in many different academic subjects go from knowing absolutely nothing to knowing everything within weeks, sometimes even days. My first grader, I just did a video not that long ago about our curriculum choices for my first and fifth grader. And in it, I talked about how my first grader does not yet know how to read. Last year in kindergarten, we were working on letters and sounds. He still does not know all of his letters and sounds and that's okay. But the other day he said to me, mom, I wanna know how to read. Please teach me right now. And he basically demanded to be taught how to read right then and there. And I had to tell him, you know, buddy, this is great, but it's going to take a few days. You're not going to get it all today. Well, he kind of schooled me because he was ready and he learned to read. Now he's reading like three letter words like cat, mat, sat, but he's saying all the sounds and he's stringing them together into words because he was ready. Last year when we tried it, he was not ready. But if he had been in a classroom setting where he was pushed to learn at their pace and on their level, you know what probably would have happened because I've seen it happen as a former kindergarten teacher, he would have learned that reading is a struggle. 
he would have learned that reading is not fun, that learning to read is difficult, that learning to read is not something that he's good at. But instead, we were able to wait. We were able to let him take it as his, at his own pace. And you know what happened is he gained confidence because the first time he sat down to learn how to read, he did it. He was ready. Now that doesn't happen that exact same way for all children. So please don't compare your child's experience to mine. But I give this example for you to see that when a child is developmentally ready for something, they can go from not doing it at all to mastering it within a very, very short amount of time. So consider that instead of being behind, it just might not be a skill that your child needs yet. So let's consider what skills they actually do need to know. If they get into the middle and the high school years and they suddenly decide that they want to be a marine biologist when they grow up, but you haven't studied any kind of biology yet, they are going to be motivated to complete whatever they need to make that happen, right? So even if they've never taken a biology class, they can take biology classes, they can study all the things about marine biology. I'm not a marine biologist, so I don't actually know the qualifications of being a marine biologist, but it won't matter that they haven't learned it yet because they'll learn it now. It might be challenging, it might not come easily to them, but they're motivated because they're interested and it's relevant to what they need right now. But if they want to be a writer or an artist, they won't need to take advanced biology, so they're not behind in that they just don't need it. It's not relevant to them. So they don't need to go that far in their biology advanced science education. How many times have you seen an adult, and maybe this is you yourself, who changed job paths and suddenly they had to learn all new skills that they never learned in school? What would they do? Now, you know, I was a trained teacher. I taught elementary school and I now have an online business. I did not learn how to build websites, how to do email marketing, how to do social media. Well, social media was not actually a thing when I was in high school and college, so let me just make that clear. But there are many things that I use now within my business that I had no idea I was going to do when I was in high school or in college and thought, I'm gonna be a teacher and this is what I'm gonna do with my life. So of course, we should teach our kids the basics, right? But instead of focusing on just these academics and just this rote checklist of things that our kids need to accomplish by a certain time and in a certain timeline, at a certain pace, we want to give them a foundation where they can go and learn anything. If a child is just spoon fed information, as they often are within the school system, they're told what to learn, when to learn it, how to learn it, what timeline to learn it on, and they're told what the right answer is. So instead we teach them critical thinking skills. We teach them how to find information. We teach them how to synthesize the information that they're taking in, how to take what they're learning and apply it to something in their real life. We teach them real life skills. We teach them emotional wellness and balance. We teach them how to make discoveries and to create new things. We teach them how to learn and how to enjoy it. That is home education. That is how we make sure that kids don't fall behind, is by teaching them as whole people, instead of just checking off lists, and instead of just making sure they hit certain guidelines by the end of the year. Now, I realize that some of you might be coming from a state that has really high regulation in your homeschool, and maybe your your state has testing requirements. And so my question would be for you, what happens after your child takes that test? So let's say your child takes a test and they are below the grade level. What happens in that situation? Is there some sort of consequence within your homeschool? 
Do you need to show how you are working toward those standards? Are you held accountable to someone? Because in some states, the test is just a test. There's not a consequence of what happens after they take the test. Or there is some sort of accountability person, um, like a mentor or you know someone who checks in with you and says, okay, what are you doing to work toward these state standards? There is always some sort of wiggle room within the state guidelines, even in high regulation states, to work within your own child's ability and the pace that they need to work at. So I just want to encourage you, if you're within a very high regulation state and you're worried about this because you're worried that your child is behind, I really want you to dig into what happens in that case. Because I'm not personally in a high regulation state. I have not had experience personally with high regulation states, but I know many people who do. And I know many people who unschool completely with zero curriculum in high regulation states. There are always ways to allow your child to flourish and allow your child to work at their own pace and their own abilities within your state's guidelines and laws. But I really encourage you to find a local, like a Facebook group or something where you can talk to other people who have been in the exact situation that you are in. So if you're in a high regulation state, find other people within that state who have similar mindsets and who have similar situations who aren't necessarily just following curriculum step by step by step by step or following the state standards you know, step by step by step and talk to moms who have been there. Talk to people who have been in your shoes and in your situation who can help you. But the reality is that if you're watching within the United States and probably Canada, you are not in that high regulation of an area. There are very few states in the United States that have that super high level regulation. So the chances are that you have a ton of wiggle room to educate your kids in the ways that you want to, in the way that works for your specific child and your specific family. And you don't need to jump through a lot of hoops to get to that spot. So if you're educating your kids at home, you can toss out that term behind. You don't need to worry that your child is falling behind because that term is not relevant anymore to you. That term is relevant to the school system. You get to give your kids what they need in the moment that they need it. And it's natural for kids, just like it's natural for us adults, to be really strong in some areas and not as strong in other areas, right? I know that I am stronger with words. I am a word person. I love writing, which is why I've been blogging for the last, I don't know, 12 years, 13, 14 years. But math is just not my strong suit. I don't consider myself behind because I have to pull out my calculator on my phone to do a more complicated math problem that my 15 year old son can do in his head. I know that math isn't my strength and that's okay. We cannot all possibly be strong and perfect in every single area with every single skill. Whether we're talking about academic skills or physical skills, athletic skills, any kind of skill. It's very rare that a person excels in all areas, right? I don't know one person who does. So why should we expect that from our kids when they're young? They have their entire lives to develop. The skills I have now in my 40s are very different from the skills I had in my 20s. I knew some basic sewing, but I didn't know how to sew myself a shirt. <laughs> I had some decent cooking skills, but I did not know how to make, you know, a chicken pot pie from scratch or gluten-free garlic cheese biscuits from scratch. I didn't know how to do any of that. I knew that you put seeds into the ground to grow things, but I had never grown my own food before. I knew that websites existed, but I did not know how to create one and build one and run one. We need to stop expecting that our kids are going to learn everything before they turn 18. It's just impossible. 
Our job is not to cram them with as much information as we possibly can before they graduate high school. Our job is to help them build a good, strong foundation so that they can build on these years at home. They can build on what they know now and whatever comes at them in the future, they can take it in and turn it into something useful. So when they decide, at some point in their life that they wanna make a hard shift to a completely different career or a hard shift to staying home with their kids or they just wanna continue on their path and grow and reach management and become a CEO or whatever it is that they want to do in their lives that we've given them the skills that they can do it. And that really does start with not labeling them as behind and not making that our focus, not making catching up with the other kids or being on grade level be the entire focus of our home education. So if you need practical support in carrying this out in your own home, in shifting your mindset around education, in getting rid of this system mindset and supporting your kids in creating that firm foundation that isn't based on rules and curriculum in being behind or not, and isn't based around these arbitrary grade levels, I encourage you head over to my website, go to siloandsage.com slash unlearn, and you're gonna find all kinds of resources on how to unlearn this system mindset, but you're also gonna find my course, Homeschool the Non-School Way. And this is my signature course that helps to walk you through this process of ditching the school system mindset of letting your kids be in the driver's seat of their education instead of you, of giving your kids a foundation of a love of learning and balancing this natural interest-led learning with curriculum when it makes sense, using that curriculum as one tool in your home education. It will help you build your homeschool around your life and your family and what you need, not just the curriculum and what the curriculum says your kids need and when they need it. So head over to siloandsage.com slash unlearn to check all that out, to find free resources as well as this course, Homeschool the Non-School Way. So if you found this video helpful and encouraging, I hope you hit the like button, subscribe to my channel, and I will see you soon in another video. And in the meantime, keep cultivating your home friends. Bye.